Welcome to another video. We're gonna see what are the main differences between assembly design and demo kinematics in Katia V5. So for the case study, I have opened the same product. As we can see on the left, we have the assembly design main product, which will integrate four components. The large orange part will be the base, which will also be defined as a fixed component. And afterwards, we have various coincidence constraints and offsets between those components in order to be able to simulate this mechanism. Now, I've made use of offset over here in order to define that surface where the movement will, uh, will be simulated. But keep in mind that this offset could have been changed either to a coincidence constraint between those two surfaces or a contact constraint. So it will be the same as an offset value of zero. If you are not that familiar with constraints within CATIA assembly design, I will position a video over here. And I highly recommend that you're gonna follow that video. It will be on a Lego car. You will have access to the step file of the Lego car. And at the end, you will, um, let's say, link all the Lego parts of that car in order to simulate the wheels, the steering wheel, and it also has a small flag so i highly recommend that you gonna check that video before you want to see what are the main difference between uh, assembly design and demo kinematics now as you can see within assembly design we can define this constraint between components and if i'm gonna start to manipulate this in order to see what exactly our mechanism will uh, move so we have this slider the blue cube that I can move. And uh, as I move my mouse, I see that I have uh, a point over here where the mechanism will no longer uh, move to the left. And if I will slightly move my mouse to the right, I'm gonna see that again, the mechanism will be blocked over here. So as you can see, I'm still moving the mouse cursor, but the cube will not uh, move forward. But if I'm gonna move it a lot, um, let's say on a higher distance, like over here, we're gonna see that I am able to snap it forward. So over here it will block, and if I will move my mouse slightly at the same speed rate, the cube will no longer slide. But if I'm gonna add some, uh, let's say, speed to the hand um, movement, I will see that I will be able to snap it all the way to this uh, direction. So as you can see, this mechanism will allow this cube to move all the way over here. And at the same time, if I will grab it and snap it over here, I will be able to snap it into various positions. This is also the main, uh, let's say, drawback of assembly design. So we can visualize how some elements would move regarding, uh, let's say, relative to each other, but we don't really have an out, out of control. We don't know what distance the cube has, um, let's say, traveled all the way up here. We can all only just go with measure and see, okay, within the max position, I see that I still have 20, 27 millimeters over here. So that's pretty much, uh, let's say, the information that we can uh, obtain using assembly design. And another drawback, as you can see, I press escape twice in order to go back. Uh, and since I snap that multiple times, Katia will now struggle a bit in order to undo all those mouse movements. So depending on the amount of movements that you do, when you're gonna close the manipulation, Katia will take a while. So as we can see, for this case study, it's not a complex assembly, but still the software is still struggling to undo all of those and it managed to, to do that. So this is the default state. Now, on the other side, I have uh, the demo kinematics of the same um, product. As you can see, the naming of the parts is the same. The constraints are the same, but the main difference is that over here, we also have uh, joints. So joints can be created directly using assembly design constraints. If I'm gonna expand the application over here, we're gonna see this mechanism. So we initially have a Revolut. I'm also gonna swap the workbench because currently I'm still in, in uh, assembly design and I will go to start, digital mockup, demo kinematics. As you can see, demo kinematics will only have, um, let's say the tools that will be added over here. 
so we don't no longer have those constraints overall there are fewer tools but these are more powerful um, and they are focused only on simulation of uh, motion of within assemblies and they can be used to analyze the kinematic of the assembly to create animations and also to perform a clash detection which is really important we can also check some uh, clash uh, detection within assembly design but it's not that uh, that a good uh, let's say workflow now, if I'm going to expand this Revolut 1, I'm going to see that the Revolut 1 integrates the coincidence number 2 and this offset. And these are the same constraints that we also have over here. So coincidence 2, as we can see between part 4.1, which is the purple component and the orange base, will be the same coincidence. So basically, a Revolut will integrate two axes in this case, the axis of the purple uh, cylinder at the bottom and this cylinder from the orange part and the offset in order to define exactly where is that that plane, that surface, where the animation will take part. If I'm going to go on Revolut and I will click on Edit, we're going to see that we have this uh, line 1, line um, 2 and also the plane. If I'm going to also move my mouse over here, we have the possibility to have this simulated in the viewport. Let me reopen that and see if it will work. In some cases, it does work. In some, we won't have that preview that will show us the, the movement. This is because this is not angle driven. So that usually works for um, the driven elements. In this case, we have the uh, length driven for this one, if I'm going to move my mouse on top of that cube, we just uh, going to see how that will move. The other components won't move relative to that. This is one uh, one of the drawbacks, but we can see exactly what is the movement within um, our assembly. So what is different for, from this one where we only had constraints? we're going to also have the joints so in this case we're going to have three revolute joints and a prismatic and this prismatic is also set to be as length driven that means that uh, this will control the, um, the movement if you want to simulate uh, the mechanism i'm going to go over here to simulation i'm going to choose the mechanism which will be mechanism one this can be simulated since the degree of freedom is set to zero that means that we have enough joints in order to fully constrain this component and see how they would relatively move um, one uh, against let's say uh, the other constrained elements so i can also change this limit currently the limit is set between minus 1000 millimeters on this direction and positive 300 on the other side we can change those over here or we can change them directly within the joint so if i'm gonna select this slider i'm gonna move it all the way to the left i'm gonna see that this will be the position where that can be simulated so minus 32 if i'm gonna go even lower with minus 10 we're gonna see that it will be like this so keep in mind that zero is over here this is minus 10 minus 32 so we need to further expand by going maybe to minus 100 this won't be a viable solution since it can't reach over there minus 40 as well but if i'm gonna go with minus 32 i'm gonna press tab we're gonna see that the cube can be moved into that position and uh, if we want to create a simulation we're gonna see that we have two windows over here so the top slider that controls the mechanism but we also have the edit simulation window i can add the point over here so from zero it went all the way to minus 32 and afterwards i will go to the positive value which in this case will be um, we see over here minus 300 but it shouldn't go all the way there so minus 280 in this case I'm going to go with 300 and see if that is a good value, but as we can see, it won't be. So we're going to have minus 280 millimeters and I can add another point over there. Now, if I want to see the simulation working, 
I can go jump to previous, so to, to the start of the simulation. I can press the play button over here, but by default we have this interpolation step set to 1, and that means that our animation will move really fast. So we only have one second for the whole animation, so you can barely see that. I'm gonna go over here with the interpolation step to a value something like 0 0.02. If I'm gonna play the simulation, now we're gonna see that working. If you want to have it looped, so this will be change loop mode to back and forth within a simulation, we can also increase the, the speed, or we can change it like this. This will be a loop mode that will um, go within a, let's say, a cycle. So this is the main advantage between uh, demo kinematics and um, assembly design. You will always want to define uh, some uh, simulations within demo kinematics in order to see exactly what are the values where um, your assembly will simulate. In this case, uh, this was set to be length driven. So the prismatic um, joint will be the one, let's say, um, bringing the motion within the simulation. I can have that unchecked and I can add the simulation uh, to be angle driven. So regarding the rotation, for example, over here, we're gonna see that uh, this will be out of value. So I will choose the other Revolut, so Revolut 3 over the cube. We're gonna see that now we can simulate this mechanism. If I'm gonna select that, now we're gonna have that value in degrees that can control this simulation. But uh, for this it's better to go with length driven with millimeters or add the revolute um, over here on the middle. If we would to add the, let's say the servo motor directly over there within the mechanism. Okay, so to summarize, let's see, in general assembly design can be used in early stages of design process when the focus in mostly on creating a functional assembly where you can check, okay, how much should this uh, sketch be padded, on what distance and so on in order to have this prismatic joint uh, slide over there. But uh, demo kinematics can be and should be later used uh, within later stages of the end process when the focus is mostly on optimizing the performance of the assembly and to analyze exactly what is the maximum minimum movement and um, what will uh, also add movement within the mechanism. So I hope that you find this content useful. I will position a video over here to the left to other similar videos regarding this. And um, to the right, a subscribe button. So feel free to subscribe if you if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching.